Well, well, not the video I expected to make today. Just got back from the gym a few minutes ago and I see this new video from Wyoming Gun Project. If you don't know, I would highly recommend going and watching his videos on the P320. This is a pistol made by Six Hour and it's used by many law enforcement and military branches connected to the US. Or, or, or at least it was. I, <laughs> I don't see that continuing for very long now. If you don't know, I am a bit of a gun aficionado myself. I enjoy firearms and I do have this 19X, which is uh, my own personal firearm. Um, you can see it is empty. Let's see, show you the chamber, do my physical inspection. It is in fact empty. And one of the things that uh, Wyoming Gun Project is showing in this new video of his is the vertical side to side movement of the slide. Well, sorry, vertical and side to side movement of the slide. Now on my 19X, I don't have nearly the same amount of travel as he does on this P320. And I think that there is a great indicator as to why that may be happening in the video that he shows. At the five minute and 41 seconds, there is a great view of the rear of the slide and the rails that are supposed to keep the slide traveling straight back and forth look like they're bent. And I don't know if they are coming this way from the factory or if this is something that happens with time and with use, but my suspicion is that if they are bent up as shown in his video, that that is probably contributing to the side to side and vertical movement that is causing these to go off. So I've actually got Photoshop pulled up here. Let's do a little analysis of our own here. Do red, red should stand out well. So if we do a horizontal line going across this section, you can see that there is some angle being created by these uh, rails or lips, depend, depending on what uh, you want to call them. But that angle is, I think, what is contributing to this excess slide movement. So if we, off to the side, do a blown up version of what that looks like. So we'll call this angle theta. And then we want to figure out how much it's contributing to both the side to side and the vertical movement of the slide. So we've got this distance over here, which is mirrored on the opposite side. And knowing just one side should be sufficient to know how much it's being allowed to move. Um, but no, stra scratch that. If, if these are moving up like this, that's actually going to create a side-to-side -side difference on both sides of the slide. So the difference is actually doubled in this case. Um, but uh, if we have on our angle, these are both a one centimeter line, right? Uh, clearly it's different in the image. I'm just giving this as an example. We're just using one centimeter to show the concept of how it changes with a, with a standardized unit, right? So call that one centimeter, call that one centimeter. We can then figure out the difference between where these two lines end up in the horizontal plane by doing some simple calculations. The one times the cosine of theta is going to be the x distance uh, traveled by the angled line. And then if we do one minus one cosine theta, that will give us our x delta, okay? And then because it's mirrored on the other side, the total x delta is simply two times the delta x, all right? We can do the same thing for the vertical travel. If this is supposed to be a horizontal line across here, which is what I suspect is causing this, uh, we can, again, figure out how much the difference is from where it should be. Let's do this. So now we're trying to solve for this difference, right? This is our Y delta. And that is simply equal to one sine of theta equals delta Y because my suspicion is that any angle created by those lips is not ideal. I suspect that they're supposed to be parallel 
with the channels that they're supposed to be traveling in. And so instead of having to do the one minus one cosine of theta, or what this would be a one minus one sine of theta, I think it's just going to be one sine of theta because it's just any di di distance is incorrect. So that is what I suspect is likely contributing to this based off of what I've been able to gather. I don't personally own a SIG P320. Now I'm really glad that I don't. It was one of the contenders for my first firearm purchase when I turned 21. And uh, I ended up going with the 19X. It happened to be on sale, if I remember correctly, or it was the last one left in the store. I don't know, there, there, was, there was some there's some factor that contributed to me getting it over the P320. And now I'm really glad that I did because uh, this is pretty scary. And, you know, basic rules of firearm safety essentially include that the gun should never go off unless it is intended to go off, right? There are a litany of rules that we follow as gun owners, or at least as smart gun owners, never pointed at anything you don't intend to destroy and treat every weapon as though it is loaded, right? But when a firearm comes out that is inherently unsafe because of a manufacturing defect, that kind of bucks the whole system of the rules entirely. So again, this isn't my usual content. I don't think that this is going to be a staple, but this is just what I've noticed following this story and trying to gather what information I can. That doesn't look right, and so I don't, again, I don't know if they're shipping from the manufacturer that way, or if this is something that happens with use. It may be that with repeated firings, the slide is creating some kind of a vertical force, causing it to lift up over time, putting force that wasn't ever anticipated for those lips, and so they become unreliable as time goes on. But in any case, the gun shouldn't be going off unless you are intending to actually pull the trigger. Um, the Glock has a trigger safety built in. And again, this is an empty firearm, but that trigger safety prevents you from pulling the trigger at all, right? Like if I bypass it, I can't pull the trigger. It's only by actually depressing the trigger safety and then pulling it back would I actually be able to get to the wall. And I'm not gonna bother with doing that right now. It's It suffices me to say right now that I don't worry about the same problems with my Glock. So yeah, Sig, please stop killing your customers. That's not cool. Anyways, like, share, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you, Wyoming Gun Project, for your coverage. I think that you've done a lot to help uncover the mystery as to why these P320s are more dangerous to the user than their target. But yeah, see you next time. This is Odd Job Entertainment, signing off.